I love shoes, Dan. What kind of shoes? Shoes that fit me. Not very common when you're six foot four and have big feet, Dan. Well, we're on to the pistol. Envy going to be starting on the T side. Versus Pro on CT with a kit onto Neo and Snax is going to be the nade man. Again, we uh, continue to see variation in some maps. We see five Kevlar's on the CT side. Sometimes in North America, you see two kits. Still hasn't come to Europe though, Dan. Well, I'm the, the pray, double kit play. I, I pray it never does because it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna go out and say that. Boop. I think it's stupid. But moving over towards B, and you can see Versus Pro seems to be playing a bit of a retake over towards B, or just they want to get five guys over towards A. Should they be required? Two plays over towards Connector for Virtus Pro. They will still have the, uh, the range. Those pistols will one shot at about 1,500 units. Speaking of which, there we go. It goes between these two sides. I'm glad that Envy didn't rely on the, uh, that Molotov that everyone just autopilot plays on train. But obviously, uh, the pistol requires more development because more significant map control needs to be had by the French side. Again, the, bit, the plant did come in though. So uh, we'll see what Happy is going to do with his Deagle Kevlar. Versus Pro just holding angles, not wanting to get too close, which is maybe uh, what Envy would like to see. But they're starting to creep into the train now, the A site. Snacks has someone behind him, but I think he, the Ali's covered it for him. The bomb is down on the floor as well. Nope, Apex was still alive, but now he is definitely dead. Okay, he is going to get finished off just about with the uh, USP. And now Happy's holding an angle with the Deagle here, and he's not going to get anything done with it. So we'll see how much money he has left in this round to go for the buy. Oh, okay, he does have enough for a Deagle. Sorry, I, an AK-47. I thought he wouldn't be able to afford it. So. My bad. He just won't have any nades really to, to do anything with. But if they play a fast round, it doesn't actually matter too much. So, so they, they, they definitely plan their money out quite well to try to be able to do something in that last round. But Kenny S is on a, a Tech 9, saving some money there. A little bit of money in the bank, just in case they win this round. He can get an AWP sooner rather than later. But will they do that? We have a bit of a push on Ali from, from the CT side, from Virtus Pro. And Envious, they are playing passively here. They are trying to catch any aggression. And look at that deep smoke. That, that's quite interesting from Virtus Pro. You don't often see that, to be honest. That deep smoke. This is like they, they, they confuse this map and they're back to Inferno again and think yeah. this is banana or something. It kind of reminds me of the aggressive beast smoke we saw from them on Cash. Like right deep, kind of closing out the sunroom as well, which is uh, something we have seen in North America recently. That seems to be coming to Europe also. So uh, a very aggressive smoke there towards Ivy. We'll see if they have a smoke to, to redo it. It doesn't seem so, but uh, Pasha's just moving away from deep Ivy now while the T's are over towards the B bomb site. You can see Taz is trying to hold down the low ground here. There is a smoke to cover the high. As often you would have a player over towards Connector holding an angle there. And Taz will get the first frag onto NBK. Neo just moves the car on his resting ground. Uh, he's going to get killed the MP7. So it's a good hold so far where it was from Virtus Pro, but now they're going to lose three players in quick, in very quick succession. Apex looking for that frag onto Bali, and he will indeed find it. So all of a sudden, 80% of VP have been wiped out, leaving it down to snacks. They don't know where he is. He has inferior weaponry, but there is no shortage of guns on the floor in sight. Yeah, the UMP got to ask for such ranges. And Devil picks up the kill. Oh, well, I, sorry, Apex picks up the kill. Apex, I think, you know, he's been playing really well across this series as well. Generally speaking, we've seen some big rounds from him and some good fragging from him. And, uh, well, the first buy round of Envious is going to go according to plan. And it's going to result in Virtus Pro having to buy up with all of their reserves. And they only have three or well, four rifles, but one is one of which is a Famas and there's a Caesar on Pasha. And actually, Kenny S did not go for an AK-47. He just left over $1,000 in the bank last round just because he could. Well, VP just got to bide their time again. And V uh, had a slow approach over towards Inferno. And it continues here on their T side. And we'll see if it can pay off for them. Obviously, Versus Pro don't have many grenades left at the moment. Taz playing the off angle there. By standing on the ladder, I do believe, even if he's not moving, his uh, gun, his shots will be inaccurate. 
compared to him. But off the ladder, he would pretty shot. He's hitting the shots straight in the face again. So two down for Envy so far. And uh, they've got nothing to answer it with. Moving over towards the B bomb site with what they have left. You can see the, uh, the push has gone much more passive over towards B. So there will be no sneaky frags to be had. Still needs to commit to the push here. And they are readying it up. The grenades should surely be soaring into the bomb site very, very shortly. There it is. Grenades are in. And Paz is there. The spray is good. That's going to completely cut off the push. There's nothing left to do at this point, surely. Apex killed. In fact, he's going to crater. He's going to fall to his death as he was damaged heavily as he dropped. And that's going to be the 3-1. Virtus Pro will be able to crush Envious's money and they will themselves be reaping the rewards. And Snow Orp, of course, is really, really that possible just yet for Virtus Pro. But, you know, you can assure yourself that you will see one, perhaps even an auto sniper at some point from Virtus Pro. But not yet. The economy is too low. But perhaps after this round, they may deem it a worthy choice. Here goes Envious, though, with their, their very economic buy. Just two Deagles, two P250s, and that's the investment. Oh, there's two thousand dollars total you know what i'd love to see with an auto sniper statistics on how many kills on average someone gets on them gets with them in general how many they get on a when they actually do kill someone how many kills on the first shot second shot and third shot because that would be uh, really interesting to see just how useful it is when it is purchased that as well. those would be maybe one day we'll get those kind of stats done maybe one day We'll get football tier statistics for CSGO. But while we wait, Happy will be the last man standing for his team who have taken down Pasha, but that's about it. Not much else going on. He's no one in a bomb either, so uh, to have to wonder what Happy is up to. Over towards the Pop Dog with his Deagle. But he's still got to under a minute to uh, do that kind of stuff. Good start for him, but he's got 7 HP though, and there is a player in main, so he's surely going to get taken down here. There it is. Snacks puts Happy out of his misery. And takes his gun. So, strong start for Virtus Pro then. And that's going to be really annoying for Envious on the C, on the T side. They would have you know, really liked to continue something. Because they've... I mean, I, I feel like Cash was Virtus Pro's all the time, all along. The only map that looked really particularly dominant was, was Inferno for Envious. So everything else has been very, very much a struggle, very arduous in nature. And here we have a very fast push, very rapid. Swift movement here coming in from Envious, tossing in the nades as they run, and they're looking to get into the site very quickly. They've got Tech Nines, a CZ, and a single AK, but they're slowing things down now, perhaps trying to bait out the counter grenades and then cause a, a, you know, some concern here that perhaps it's going to be B. And in fact, it is actually going to be B, so they actually go for the fake here. Taz picks up both kills on the spray, and we will just continue to watch Pasha there, why not? <laughs> as we have. Uh, the four versus three now. The bomb is actually planted, but oh, how does Taz not pick up that kill? That was very close. That was very low, but there's surely no way that Envious can save this one now. The smoke there to guarantee the defuse with a couple of men covering as well. And so there you go. That's just try to pick up the round. The fake did not work here for Envious. Again, only, only, only losing uh, Pasha it seems to be the one that has to die at the moment on train. So that's a plus for the VP economy. The orbs do come out for both sides now. Kenny, AWP, no armor, a familiar, um, familiar story. Neo will have the helmet to boot. So we'll see. Kenny holding the angle for his teammates in case there is a push. Even with flashes, Kenny will be able to mount a defense from that position because he's so far away that uh, he might have white for 0.1 seconds or something like that. Has shoulder peeking. Uh, that position again, I think they, the T's just threw a flash over there actually to try and force him off, but he wasn't kind of posted up holding an angle with his gun. He's just wants to see what's going on, then he's, he will drop the smoke should it be required. This pro are creeping close though on Ali. The bomb is there, the bomb is picked off here. That is a very big problem. Does he see the gun? This is really. Really dangerous here. That smoke seems to be obscuring vision completely. Oh, he's actually going to hit a tank there. Pasha knows the players. So he can spray into the smoke a little bit. He does get some extra tanks, but his tracer fire is going to give away his position, and that's going to be an easy frag for Apex through the smoke. So despite taking some damage, it's going to be a positive trade here for the envious side as they now 
queue up the push into the bomb side. They coordinate in, and that's the first frag as MBK drops snacks atop the train on the B on the A bomb site. And now it's uh, Neo, who could actually do something here. He's got an AWP. He picks up a kill, causes distraction, and Taz can strike from the unknown position of the pop dog area. It's like he will strike regardless of distraction, and Neo is left alone with the orb. Not much doing in this position for Neo other than trying to save the op. And he's so far been able to elude his opponents. The elusive one, Neo. Looks to be good here in saving this AWP, maybe even getting a frag. He's got to be careful not to switch, switch to uh, a gun at the wrong timing there. Not scoping to not give any sound cues as to his position. And there it is. He knows exactly how, he, how close he can stand to the bomb. And as such knows he's safe. Well, that's going to be expensive for the VP side. The rebuy will come out. And uh, is York going over towards Pasha? I mean, he is playing towards Ivy, so... Okay, they're throwing the ops all over the place. So it'll be double ops here, Snax and Neo. We see there, you can play the AWP in basically every position on the CC side of this map. The regular ones. So I do wonder where the second one's going to go. I think... Let's see. Snacks going up for the high ground now. All the usual ones uh, can be, you know, they're all, they are known by both sides, so it can be a bit tricky. Let's see where Kenny S is a bit later on. So we've got Neo holding the angle above, while Taz holds the angle below. That's quite a nice setup towards B, actually. And indeed, they will retreat with the frag over there. Barley pushing main will get punished by Apex. So a man down for both sides. Over a minute here for Envy to play with. So a lot still to be done and to be defended by Versus Pro. Yeah, here we go. Envious now getting themselves through team main. Apex shoving in the nades there. And who is he going to find? There's a player in quad. Apex gets a one versus one here. And he wins. Important one there. As now it will turn the attention of Snacks. And Apex will gun him down as well. Apex so savage right now. But it's not good here from Taz. He needs to get that frag here. He's against three players. Barely makes it happen. They're both really, really low. Taz spraying wildly there through the smoke, trying to get a frag. So quickly back in after the reload. Very, very quick stuff indeed from Taz. But he's going to get shut down by the pistol. Taz looked very, very panicked there. And the round will go to Envious. And I don't blame him for being panicked. It is really hard in the chaos of the A-site pushes. And that, that, that's the kind of chaos that Envious can take an advantage from. That's the kind of play that they can get ahead of Virtus Pro on. But I don't know that there are many others such as that. So that's VP back on the Eco now. After a good start, they still have a two-round lead over their opponents, but it doesn't look great for this round. There is a five-man push through Ivy here. That is uh, quite a surprise, but nobody's there to be greeted by it. Bomb is over towards main, and Devil may go for a bit of a spot there, but he'll need to be careful because if they get too close, and he could be in a bit of trouble here. Indeed, he will hold him down for the time being. There's no cable on these plays, which will help, but now he needs to start running away. Although even if the bomb goes down in a situation, don't think it'll be too bad. Apex, no intention of checking the corner there. It's a lovely sweep to finish things off. So, a nothing round here for the CTs. Pasha, last man standing, Kenny is waiting for him. Kenny will dispatch of him as his comrades. So, Envy close the gap to one, and we will see the CTs back on the bye. Now, let's see what the Wayward Virtus Pro can accomplish with the full buy that they have. And honestly, I don't know that they really need to make any specific adjustments. I think that throwing in aggression against Envious is not necessarily required. Um, perhaps just, you know, waiting for them to make the move. And that's, that is trained basically on the CT side. That's one of the reasons why it's a little bit uh, annoying for a team like, let's say, you know, if you're a Luminosity, a highly strategical tactical team, you get a lot of edges from forcing, uh, from being able to make creative, innovative plays. And you don't have much space for that on the CT side, but Snacks will find an angle there and he defends against Apex. Giving an early advantage here for the Polish side as another player is spotted by Neo. He caught out of position, lucky to stay alive actually. And Virtus Pro have just a little bit more information, but not enough yet to convince them as to what's going on. And Envious probably feeling like they want to set up a, a push into A when all is said and done. The bomb is towards that, that bomb site, and they have two towards Ali and one towards Pop Dog. But perhaps uh, maybe they can make an opening here on the B site to trick the Polish side.
seems they're going to look for an engagement towards Upper B. Two players over there. The, uh, if there's an AWP over towards Connector, it is Neo for the time being, but it snacks with the AWP. Again, the AWP, I know Kenny S will like to play from that position in Connector sometimes while well, NBK holds the low ground, so we'll see if that setup comes in for versus Pro a bit later on. 40 seconds left on the clock now. We've got CTs rotating away from Ivy, still kind of around the, around the back of A. That's Pasha, you can see him rotating now as Devil gets taken down by Neo. So the push is coming in, the bomb's on the floor at the moment, but all the frags are going the way of, of versus Pro pretty much. Just Devil, NBK remaining. He will get taken down, completely exposed over towards the top. So uh, a solid round there from versus Pro. Silent killers of all those uh, silent stem fours, but now the big green gun will come out for the second time. So this round might be a bit louder. Absolutely, and uh, it's a good opportunity for Virtus Pro as well as the money is starting to run out for Envious. And you can see that uh, just playing it calm, not really getting too too crazy, is going to allow them to you know make uh, picks. As Envious are going to go for those uh, those early round advantages themselves. Taz waiting there. Taz ever the the inner man. And this is actually can often be Taz's best map actually, actually the train. The train. Now we'll see Envious. After taking uh, early map control, just creating presence and also pulling an extra player towards B. They start to gear up for the A play. Setting up the grenades. And we have a not a close defense, but not a far away defense either from Vadis Pro in the middle. Now it's going to be tough here to break the lines for Envious. And they've decided to reoccupy Inner again. Perhaps they all try to run a fake with the two players in Inner with some smokes. But because there's two players there for Virtus Pro, they'll be able to actually deal with that quite well. In fact, they will throw the nades in and send both players back, who will now attack Popdog very quickly. In comes the A play. Yeah, so we've got Barney on the train itself. That smoke, though, might be a bit weird, and that might uh, allow each, other, each team to see the legs of their opponents. Barley goes down though on the train, but there's a flank coming in towards Popdog. There is still a player over there for the tees, but let's see if it pays off. Smash gets taken down. Pasha through the smoke will fall to Kenny, and here comes that flank. It's Taz, and he's gonna take the bomb planet down. No, he's not. Four versus one now. There are heavily tagged players, but it won't matter because Neo's on the AWP rather than the M4, and he will go for the save straight away. So uh, these middle rounds in the first half being difficult for versus pro. Win, lose. The economy is going to get wrecked again. Neo's got zero dollars in the bank here, so doesn't bode well for the rest of his team. Yeah, and you know, in reality, what you really need to see from Virtus Pro for them to have a strong chance to win this map is to have a decent CT side. They don't, don't need a great CT side. They don't need anything special. They just need a decent amount of rounds. So something, something between a region of six, six to eight is perfectly reasonable for them to work with. Anything else I think will be a bonus. And Neo's gonna be whittling down the players and the economy of Envious with those two frags. But it's all about Virtus Pro's T side. That's that's where you expect to see them, you know, able to impose their will and dictate the match, and get really a lot of rounds. So I feel like they're very comfortable right now. It does feel like Envious are putting on a much better showing in some regards, but it's still going to be really tough for them no matter what. I think. All right. So playing around this open. Yes, this is the angle that Taz was shoulder peeking earlier on, but uh, Neo is going to be going for the. Full up aggression here. He is susceptible to being flashed there, so Taz might want to look away, but indeed he is going to go for some aggression here. NBK coming in, NBK going down. Taz maybe going for the gun will get taken down in return by Apex, but uh, Neo, he's changed his position entirely, so maybe not wanting to get traded there in the close position. But Taz has done some work. Apex down to 4 HP as well. NV rotating away from the V-bomb site now, which might be a bit tricky, although no site is, I think, going to be ideal in this situation. But do we like Bialy's chances there? Oh, he's going to get smoked, but it's not going to do much. Good luck, Bialy. May the force be with you. The force was not with him. Maybe it can be with Pasha. He picks up the kill there. Oh, not the, quite the second. That was a good lineup, though. It snacks to capitalize. Bomb is found, and all of a sudden, Virtus Pro have a very upsetting round on their hands for the deal to Apex and Envious. Apex finds the kill though somehow. Not getting tagged even once. Looking for the last player now. 30 seconds to do it as well, so not too much time. Oh, he spots him. 
And he's got a good angle here to get the immediate headshot. He knows he has to play the headshot angles. And boom, there it is. Snacks picks up the kill with the 5-7. And that's the round there for Versus Pro. Indeed, a very upsetting round for Envious. One that they felt they should have had and one that really puts their economy down the toilet somewhat. They can still force a buyout there with a drop, but it's not comfortable. And, and Virtus Pro looks like they, it's very possible for them to go 10 rounds here now. And that, that would be very disastrous, catastrophic in fact for, for Envious. We will see where it goes. We've got the Mag7 and P90 coming out for the CT side. So uh, both economies being stretched here. NBK down to the Deagle. Some precautionary flashbangs coming in. And things will start to slow down after initial map control is established. The rules have been set, the lines have been drawn. Could Envy be going for an execute towards the A site? Seems likely here with the smokes and the flashes. I don't think this is going to be a fake based on the positions of people towards Popdog as well. You see them start to charge in two different positions around the E box with the bomb as well. That's going to be a rotation coming in for the CTs as well as all the kills so far. Save for Bayali going down. Four versus two. Good situation, but it can turn around in a second here on a map such as this. Near the high ground, take down Happy, and NBK will be finished off by Pasha. So eight to five, still looking good for Versus Pro in map three. Yep, absolutely. They're looking really fantastic at the moment. And Virtus Pro have had a, not the best time ever when it comes to their matches in the ECS. They've played some great matches and they've, they've had some, you know, not embarrassing losses, but definitely some unexpected losses. And this, this would be a really nice ma match for them to pick up. Envious also, I think, in the same kind of tier of team. I think they're the same kind of tier of team at the moment in many regards to, as, as uh, Virtus Pro are. But here you go, we've got Happy, you know, going in right now, just charging, looking to see if he can find something for his team. He can't. The hopes of this round are really low for Envious. They've not really set the bar beyond maybe picking up a frag, to, I, I wouldn't think. Uh, Apex might be the man to do it. He's got the eagle. He's gonna pick away there. It's the only pistol that really performs at long range that they have. The PT-50 can be pretty awesome at mid-ranges, but very random at the very long ranges. Oh, there you go. Deagle connects. And that's Pasha dead. But I don't think Virtus Pro will be too worried about their money. Unless they, of course, lose four players here. Minutes on the clock and the bomb is still behind main in, I believe it's in the upper area. But uh, split, split away from all the other T's. Kenny, it's gonna spread, it's gonna spread, and you're, and you're gonna be in trouble. That's the thing I was talking about on Inferno as well. You think you're safe in the corner, then it starts to spread, and then it starts to the time to buy. So Apex alone now. One kill, well, make that two. Nice work there. Some good damage done. But another round ultimately on the board for VP. So we move into the last round. Versus Pro will have uh, more than enough money to get a full buy-in. Envy will be limited, but the AKs will come out. So what All do you right. think would have been ideal for Envy on their T-side in terms of rounds? 16. <laughs> well, fair enough. Must be a dire situation for them then. Yeah, it's not looking too good so far. It's always possible for them to have a shutout uh, CT side. It's always possible, but it's unlikely. The, uh, the pedigree of Versus Pro their T-size of this map is, is strong. And it runs, runs for quite a long period of time they've been, they've been good on this. I see no reason for them to, to suffer now. And uh, it's, a great, it's a really great start for Virtus Pro. I think, I think they're going to feel absolutely amazing after, after this if they manage to, uh, to secure the 10-5, which is looking likely at this point. Envious in a position now where they have a limited amount of utility and essentially if they are to use any of it, sort of expect it to be committing them into wherever they're, whatever they're doing because they, they can't have a second chance because they're so low on utility. And they have two players at Ali. It really looks like it's going to be a push into wait. Now they want to cause some presence here to perhaps delay rotation just ever so slightly from the B side of the map. And also due to the fact that uh, Taz is such a menace, Taz always finds amazing flank timing from B into the pop dog area, that is a problem. But here comes the push now for them. And MBK needed that frag really badly right now to allow the player out of team aim. But now things get really difficult. The nade's coming in for Virtus Pro. And what on earth is to be done here for Envious? The French side is being utterly annihilated in this situation, just leaving Apex left. And he's gonna take down one. But there's so many to follow. 
How much more can Apex do? Absolutely nothing more. And that's the 10-5 for Virtus Pro. It looks calm and it looks very, very considered from them. And it was an expected, expected result as well, I should say. I mean, well, we've been saying it all along, really. So, so Virtus Pro uh, getting the, the half the start that they needed. And as I said, they should have a stronger T half than, than, a, than their CT half typically. So it bodes well, very well for them indeed. Yeah, and the pistol's going to be quite important, obviously, because if Versus Pro win that and don't get upset, then that's going to be 13-5, which might be pretty much a shutout from that point. So, yeah, 10-5 to 5 at the moment is a strong score for Versus Pro. We've had a slow approach from Envy, and they got them a third of the rounds on the board. Um, so we'll see what VP have to offer. I, I mean, even, even if they are favoured, Envy are still heavily well they're very uh, strong fraggers but yeah. also i mean i mean the variance of the of the site by the design of train obviously you know there's so many corners and different potential situations you look the wrong way and that could be a vital kill for the other team and then it and then who knows what can happen so there's uh, still a lot to play for in the third map of this best of three i feel like th i mean this is this is the thing for, for envious their individual skill is so high that if they are performing they don't need the, the optimal setups the only thing that can really hurt them massively is the chaos that can happen on, on the A site, for example, because you have to look in so many spots, and if you have a player that's dead all of a sudden, then all, then all of a sudden there's like spots where you're not covered where you thought that you might be, so it's hard to adjust in time. But Envious, again, if you're a team with a high amount of individual skill, the CT sides can go very well for you, even if you're not very adept at the map. That's one of the ways that it, it, it often can work. This is why uh, we see FaZe, you know, it's all about their CT sides and not about their T sides. It's because, and that's the reason. They're, they're not really a strategical team, but their their individual skill is absolutely out of this world sometimes. And here you go. It's going to be. I think <laughs> I think MBS are, predict are predicting this. They have a setup to quickly rotate to B. So this shouldn't go well for Virtus Pro. It shouldn't. Yeah, all well, the charges coming in. We'll see if they can try to get some frags and push the uh, the bomb sites as well to the other side of the interior yard. And there we go. Two frags. And then Apex coming in on the corner, catching pass and reloading. But pass gets a kill anyway. Four frags out of five so far. Kenny. The only man stopping them from getting that fifth. And ooh, Pasha is going to knock on this door a few times, but it's not going to be opened. Kenny with 19 HP, just wondering what he can do here. All he can do at this point is try and salvage some frags. Yeah, and maybe save the Kevlar into the next rounds. Um, yeah, so positionally, Envious were doing really well there. But you can see the trouble to find a single headshot. That, that, that level of... of uh, like, if you miss those first few shots on the USP, you're usually going to be dead. And that's exactly what happened. And then the first player died, and then the second player died, and then all of a sudden the, the Ts are on mass and doing double peaks on the remaining players, and there's just nothing you can do. So, despite having good positions, they were not able to hit the shots that they uh, availed themselves to. I still think that they had a great position, but but it will be Virtus Pro taking the pistol, and we see the force buy from Envious. They want back in, and they want back in right now. Yeah, they, they must win this force. Basically, so many deagles as well. It's beautiful to see all the deagles. You know, there's just the sheer potential for carnage when so many deagles are out, even on a force fight. Is fantastic. So what is the play from Virtus Pro? They know the force is coming and we can't afford the eco. It's that simple. But what will they do to play against? the potential force by. We do have Molotovs, lots of noise being made and uh, no nades being used, no flashes, anything. Neo relying on the uh, flying Mac-10 to, to get a Mac-10, to get a headshot there, but he will do no such thing. So that is a pretty bad start for uh, Versus Pro. 50 seconds left on the clock and no indication as to where they might push now. So, we do have the push, or rather, just some more forward positioning here from some of Versus Pro's players. They still don't know, they really want to get more information. Um, as you said, the Max 10 player dying there, that didn't really give them enough info. Now they're trying to poke into the A side, and all of a sudden, more kills raining in for the envious side. Happy connecting the deal shot onto Snacks, and Virtus Pro decide to switch it up, go back up, pop dog rapidly, rotate into the B bomb site, and get the bomb down and try to win the round. But Devil's close with the Deagle, surely he gets this. Two big tags. Not the finish, finishing blow though, Taz left on 2 HP and all of a sudden the player advantage is absolutely with the Virtus Pro side. But here comes Kenny S with that UMP close range, Taz in the perfect position and there's not much to do now for MBK, surely. 
That was a good save from Virtus Pro. That was super close. Yeah, that's I I was concerned once once the first kill came in, I was concerned then. I'll just leave it at that. So NV with two to two thousand four hundred. What do they do? It's five to twelve. I mean they can post up a strong CT half, it's it's possible to, you know, get a, a bunch of rounds in a row. But uh, maybe not the most likely thing. That said, they are kind of without choice at this point, so Nico will indeed come in. A fast push from B, three players coming up through A as well, but they will be a little bit more passive over there. Down go to B players, so that will mean a full rotation. So versus Pro, will they go fast? Because obviously that could be a bait for the rest of the players to be lurking behind. But NVK has already rotated his way over towards the A sites. And indeed the numbers will be over towards B. Snack's going to uh, Pepper, Kenius, and then roast him. <laughs> Pepper is a good word for what we just saw. I think MBK is going to be a savage. Yes, the AK to the face. And there you go, 13 to 5. Virtus Pro looking super comfortable right now. There's not much in the way of opportunity for Envious. They lost that pistol round, they suffered the consequences. They, to be fair you know, to them, they almost won the force buy. That was really close. But now it is the rifles. No AWP for Kenny S, which is always going to be a sad story. Kenny uh, is not having the best game ever, ever, but so, you know, it, the rest of Envious are in the same, you know, shoes really at this point. So we shall now see if Envious can defend what's, what's coming their way. How will Virtus Pro play this? So far it's looking quite slow. And Virtus have all the potential to, to you know, go for any kind of set piece. A site, B site. It's like they are potentially just baiting out some pre-nades here from, from Envious, or rather some counter-grenades. But Envious still very, very unsure of the positioning of their opponents. They're not really sure what's going on at the moment, and they don't want to really risk making an information play. And you don't have to on this map. That's one of the, the, uh, the kind of facets of, of train from a CT perspective, why some teams love it and why some, why some teams hate it. You don't have to, you can't do that much on your CT side. The pushes can be incredibly risky if you decide to push Ali and you don't do it safely. You have to commit quite a lot of resources to make it safe. And if you're wrong, then, well, life is bad. So here you go, the push comes in now for Virtus Pro. They decide to unleash the force of the Polish might into that Avon site. And so far, it is quite mighty indeed. Neo with the first two frags. Happy, the only one to respond. Looking for the bomb planter at the moment, but he won't be quick enough. Has to go for the reload anyway. Another smoke to try to obscure things. And coming around the back, as he often does, to try to make the frags happen, but it's not going to go here for Envious. Down to the 14-5, and Envious is staring at a fast, fast train that looks like it will be the victory for Virtus Pro, unless Envious can show us something that they're yet to... Or well, some kind of life, some kind of effervescence that we're yet to see really on their train game. So it's going to be the Scout, the UMP, the Famous, the 5.7, the CZ, the Jumble Cell by coming in from Envious to try to save this game. And they're going to need to start to take big risks. If they want to come out, they want to come out big, they're going to take the big risks right now. That's the only way that this is going to work with such a disadvantage, an inherent disadvantage on the weapons. So here Virtus Pro go, they're trying to keep this safe. This is more or less anti force by kind of play here, pushing everyone down alley. They are all lining up and taking a lot of damage together here, but they are getting the frags. But this is a real opportunity for Envious to get back in. There's another kill from Happy, looking to make it a second one, but not quite. Down to the one versus two, Neo, easily spraying down MBK. Sending him to rest. And the Devil has to get it done with the UMP. Versus Neo. Neo has the bomb on his back able to plant at any bomb site at any time as far as devil's concerned we'll see if variance comes into this it's so difficult for both players but perhaps more to ct yep absolutely when the information is unknown in this situation 45 seconds left on the clock so neo can walk all the way devil's got himself a nice upgrade it's gold as well Dan. Maybe it's worth something. If he survives the strand, he can potentially take it to a pawn shop. Seems he's going to play around the pop dog area. Will he be moving into B though? And what kind of plant will Neo go for? If he goes for the open plant on the side, which I hope he does. No, he's going to go for the default plant, which is going to make it hard for him to defend actually. 
but we'll see if he can get himself into uh, good enough positioning. He's going up for the high ground, and he's peeking towards Devil's position as well, but he's behind the box. Oh, look at that. Devil's not going to spot him. And I don't know if Neo... Did Neo see him? Well, I think he did, and he has the Molotov as well. So that's, I think, why he planted here. Boom, there it is. Lovely stuff. Yeah, I think it must have been the fact that he had the Molotov. is probably his, his, his uh, reasoning to plant there. So we can uh, do the Molotov off the door, get that ah, set up, set up going. But the, the thing is, is that works both ways, because uh, he doesn't know if Devil has a smoke. It's unlikely that he does. But also what he doesn't know is... Uh, if de how Devil will see that. Because if Devil looks at the plant, he's going to see that as a plant for that exact thing that Neo is trying to do. So it does give it away slightly, but never mind. It, it is the round for Neo. And uh, another force by here for Envious. Well, it's, it's, it's more respectable this time. Of course, there's no other choice than to fall by. Oh, the might of the, of the Poland James is coming again. Yes, and with great flashbangs, Dan. But the Molotov will put a stop to all their plans, it seems. Devil will be holding the angle, but there's still no help in Todan. He is well alone there. We have a rotation coming in finally from the connector area, but the creep is real. Den Devil's trying to hold upper and lower on his own. He has no idea how close these players are. These players will not know either. De Devil goes down, and now we've got two CTs at the back of the D bomb site. Kenny S coming in, and NVK also getting a frag with the scout. So far, so good, actually, for uh, the NV side. The bomb might get planted, but they've got a man advantage to the CTs. Uh, dropping another smoke as well, and he'll push through it, and he'll get the frag, that's crazy! Yep, he's gonna fall back as well, distracting everybody, delaying them, and then the flank can come in to do its damage. Very well played there by Kenny S. A lot of players would actually have just got the frag and continued pushing, thinking they can get more on the unknown players, but Kenny S basically went for the kind of 100% play there, instead of the, uh, the flashy play. Whereas if, if he just, now he's drawn the attention towards the, the right side, the flank coming in from behind and left can do a huge amount of damage. Which is, and that's going to be the case every time. So, so smart play from Kenny S. It's always good to see. I always appreciate it when the, a player takes the more intelligent uh, option instead of the, the flashy or the kind of, I guess, carried away with it. Good decision making is very, very important in this game. And I guess pretty much everything in life. So, big setup here from both teams. The all ponds are snacks, all the Molotovs, all the smokes for the VP side. And Snacks, can he get the kick? Oh, he spots an elbow, and he will take that elbow. And that elbow has now been shot. Yeah, he will need a prosthesis to replace that, Dan, because that is long gone. <clears throat> He's got one lurker over towards B for the T's, making sure there's no aggressive response here from the CT. Speaking of aggressive responses, Snacks gets taken down by Apex facing main. There are two T's still in that area, and we have uh, Pasha rotating away from Ivy now, so uh, Envy will have to do a bit of a waiting game for the time being. But the smoke's coming down towards Pop around the one minute mark from the CTs to uh, try to thwart any ideas from Virtus Pro. The Pop flash coming in for Kenny to peek as well. But he is nobody found there. They should hear the nade, they should hear the, the nades being primed by Kenny. Realize the smoke is finally coming in with a push, but Kenny will trade by Molotov. So three versus three. Yeah, and you can see the flashes of brilliance here and there from Envious. But uh, the sustained brilliance over time is, is uh, the question. Now Apex is in a decent position here to get a, a kill or two, actually. And now there are only two players left of uh, Virtus Pro. They need to trade. Well, they don't need to trade, rather. They need to, to just kill them without trading. That's what they meant to say. And uh, that's not going to happen. No kill, no trade. Tag there from pa Taz. You'll see the blood spatter, but... In comes Happy. It's just a matter of time now before that Happy blank kills Taz. Taz has an expiration date today, so it's, it's set for, well, maybe in the past now. Past, he's past his sell-by dates. And it's going to be the 15-7, so Envious uh, are able to pull some rounds back here, but again, it feels a little bit like uh, cash in some regard, it, you know, that in that it was always meant to be going to Virtus Pro. It's just a matter of time. Eight rounds behind our Envy, and the buy continues for Versus Pro. So they have many attempts to win that one round. I mean, are we going to see a, a mirror of cash where Envy were many, many rounds down and continue to bring them back until Versus Pro took it over the line at, at the last possible opportunity? I feel like no, because Versus Pro are already on 15, so they just need one this time. Before it was 14 rounds where they were stuck, which kind of gave Envy us two chances in some senses, but uh, yeah. Taz, I mean, Virtus Pro 
I just, uh, they are train, James. They are the train. They are one with train. Boom. Beautiful pick there from Snacks. Jumps down into the angle, hits the shot. The player was exactly where he predicted him to be. And that is a sore reality for Envious to now try to make up for. As Virtus Pro just sit and wait a little bit. They wait on if there is a potential aggression as, as a response, maybe a push into team main, maybe a push into inner to try to get some information or you know get ahead of a push for the CT side, but that's not that's not happening. Envious are just sitting back and trying to get it done with the four players they have left to line. Now we have some challenges coming in from Neo. Almost takes down Devil, but not quite. Devil lifts a 14. Meanwhile, the push comes in towards the Apex. Got some all over the place. Apex on the high ground. He's not going to get traded here by Pasha. Still alive. Going up the ladder to avoid most of the nade damage as well. Molotov will keep him up there. And he will take Pasha down. Solid play by Apex. One good start on default, but somehow Devil's put himself on the high ground towards B. So no plant all round for Virtus Pro. Apex there, man. That was really smart. The way he dodged the nade and the way his positioning was afterwards. Very, very cool stuff from Apex. And, uh, well, it's, it's, it's time for a save. But it's pro need to save. Actually, even with the bomb down, they wouldn't have been able to buy in, in this round. They would have needed to save anyway. So it, it, they're not getting the bomb down. Actually, it doesn't make a huge difference with Versus Pro. They'll still have a buy in the next round. I, you know, it won't be as good, but uh, maybe missing a few nades here and there. But they should have AKs. So not a huge loss for them. And again, just the patience, just the waiting game for Envious. This time playing just one pl uh, person, just, just Devil leaving him forward in, in inner, in the inner bomb sites. The outer bomb site will be now under assault by the Virtus Pro players as they try to just throw their bodies and hope, hope to get something done. Obviously, they don't really have anything here. Although Bialy with one tech nine is going to pick up an AK, so Bialy could be a bit dangerous there. He's been Pretty brutal the entire series, but he will die, and it will be now a six round difference as Virtus Pro have a buy. And actually, it looks a bit healthier than I thought. Will they opt for the AWP? Pasha has the money to buy it, but no, they're going to go five AKs, so it seems they may have an execute in mind here. Tons of smokes, tons of monotops, tons of flashbangs to boot. Let's see what uh, Virtus Pro choose to do in this round. Everybody's got two flashbangs. That is 10 that flashes, Dan. That's a lot of flashes before you even get into the CT side. It very much is. Okay, so Virtus Pro, how do they play this one? Oh, there's the initial grenades over the top for Virtus Pro. Are they, are they going down Polder? Or will they go to winner? It looks like they're going in there actually, so they're going to try to fake this. But they won't send any players. So Envious probably realized, you can see they. Envious realized that almost immediately, but did Virtus Pro buy themselves enough time? Looks like they may have done, as we get a team kill. As onto, oh no, onto Pasha, that is, that is brutal. But they, they still made the entry happen, so it's an even situation on the players. Not for long, Envious lose yet another man, Apex is dead. And the rest of the CTs aren't in, in the best positions, but they have something to work with. They do indeed. Well, the trades continue here. Two CTs left and the clock continues to tick. Never mind, it's over. Versus Pro finally take it over the line. I just want to note that it was Dan who pressed the bell there. So uh, let's just remember that. Next time I call some havoc and he moans about it. He is also a I don't doll. do it during, during insane uh, highlight clips, James. That is, that is true. <laughs> that is, you That's might... the key difference. Yeah, okay, fine. There you go. All right. Well, that was uh, an interesting series. Um, it, it does feel like you can see some improvement on Envious, but it does also feel like they, they are kind of stuck around the same level at the moment you know, since I've last you know, been seeing them. But the thing is, is that you can also see that their skill is so good, that their individual level is so high, that they can always cause trouble for pretty much anybody, but I don't see them taking a best of three from any of the established top four, top five teams at the moment. That's the only issue I see for them because they lack the structure. Well, let's see if they can get that over time. Again, a close one, but versus Pro take it over the line here in this best of three. We will be back tomorrow with more ECS Counter-Strike. There will be a European match and a North American match. So look out for those again, that is tomorrow. But for now, we are finished. So we will thank you for tuning in and say goodbye.